I suppose um I suppose you know I've been to places I've never been before just going to South Africa kind of to the middle of nowhere and normally if I was going somewhere with that I would have been with the GUI you know you'd be mm. kind of spoon fed yeah. um, or with, with with Golf Ireland now so it was you know it, it was pretty easy to be honest as an amateur and then all of a sudden I'm just going down there with my caddy um, and it's just the two of us and I'm hiring the car and I'm you know trying to trying to navigate my way through South Africa at yeah, yeah. 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning or whatever it's uh yeah, I mean, it's it, it, there are certainly kind of added um, added strains that are involved with, with being a professional. But I mean, yeah, I suppose as I said, it's it's very easy when you are traveling all the time to try and nitpick and find um, find things to be negative about. So uh, I think my caddy and I have just made a point of it, just being as positive as, as we can all the time, just mm. um, making sure that you know we're uh, we're enjoying every moment of it. Because yeah, as I said, it's very easy to get negative out here when you're traveling all the time. I suppose, yeah, as you said, this was my first full season, you know, last year, just straight after the Walker Cup, I just turned pro and kind of everything felt like a, I suppose everything felt like a bit of a novelty, just getting to compete in Challenge Tour events, you know, getting to compete in European Tour events, it was just all so um, fresh to me, so I suppose this year, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm still trying to enjoy it as much as I ever have, and I think I am, but um, I think the kind of reality kicked in that it is now a job, and I have to, uh, I have to be very professional about what I'm doing and uh, just make sure that you know when I show up to events that I'm, I'm going about things in, in the right way and you know I'm, I'm not here to just to enjoy it or just to take in the, the atmosphere of it all I'm here to, to try and um, you know get that job security and and uh, compete to the best of my ability and I, I think um, there's a lot of factors that go into it but I'm learning more and more about that every day. I, I think it was to be honest a few weeks before that I took I took a week off. I wasn't really enjoying my golf as much as I felt I should have been, and I wasn't. Um, I, th I think, I, given the fact that I played a lot of kind of high-profile events at the start of the year, you know, such as the, the Irish Open, and I played a couple of PGA Tour events, and um, the JP McManus Invitational, you know, I, I think I put a, a lot of pressure on myself to perform. And um, as cliche as it sounds, just went back to basics of just enjoying the game. You know, I just kept working hard, kept um, kept trying to stay at it. But on top of that, trying to uh, trying to enjoy it was very important for me. So I took a week off and kind of worked on that, and then came back and put in some good performances there in um, Finland and at the K Club, which was nice to, to you know perform well in front of a home crowd. Uh, obviously, there are pressures and expectations that come with that when you're one of the few Irish players that are out playing in the Challenge Tour. You know, there's there's going to be um, a lot of talk about you that week, so it was nice to be able to perform. Uh, under that pressure but yeah I mean uh, I suppose that was the peak so far hopefully my season hasn't peaked yet but um, yeah so far that, that they were certainly the two highlights those two weeks yeah so I, I mean it clashes with the third last challenge tour event and um, yeah it was obviously a very tough decision to make but uh, as grateful as I am that I got the invitation to go back to the Dunta this year I just decided that right now uh, it's it's important that um, I think I kind of keep my my focus on what, what the overall goal is you know obviously I'm hoping to be playing um, the Dunhill links and uh, events like that for for the rest of my life so it'd be nice to, to just kind of stay focused for now um, and yeah obviously you know it's, it's an event that meant a lot to me last year obviously uh, the first kind of high profile event that I competed in um, and yeah I mean I love St Andrews I love everything about that golf course I love everything about that event and I really wish I was going back I've done a lot of work on just kind of the process just you know making sure I'm sticking to to uh, the overall goal as opposed to, you know, it's uh, obviously it'd be nice to get that short term, um, I suppose that short term elation of playing the Dunhill again and going back there and competing. But I think I'm just kind of trying to keep things in perspective and just look at things in the long run, as you said, yeah. It's so easy to get very consumed in the rankings out here. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's, I mean, you'd be lying if you said you didn't pay attention to the rankings because everybody out here pays attention to the rankings. Everybody knows where everybody is. Everybody's uh, pretty clued into that side of things. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, but to be honest, I'm, uh, even when things weren't going well at the start of this year, you know, there was a time where I was out, almost outside the top 100 of the rankings and, um, you know, almost looking like I was losing, losing job security next year. And I just kept on, I suppose, as I said, just kept working hard and kept to the process of just making sure I show up every day. And that's just what I've tried to do, just show up every single day um, at tournaments, just try to try to get better, try to keep learning, try to prepare as well as I can for that tournament. And, you know, I talked to my coach and my, my mental coach a little bit about the, the remainder of the season. And I think we're we're prepared for all outcomes. You know, it's not the, the be all and the end all. If 
I don't finish in the top 20 this year, obviously that's the goal. But if if I don't, I'm prepared for it and I'm prepared to um, yeah, keep showing up and keep learning and keep getting better because that's uh, that's all I've, I've ever known really and that's all I'm going to, to try and continue to do. Even if I do get a tour card, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be right reset and to try to try keep getting better. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited for the rest of the season. I've got a few opportunities between the grand finals and between even Q school. If I don't get into the top 20, I still have an opportunity there. So there's plenty of opportunities, plenty to look forward to. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to it, to be honest, to so just uh, put the foot down and keep competing. I mean, I'd like to think I'm pretty friendly with most people out here on the Challenge Tour, but um, certainly the Irish lads in particular, you know, we, anytime there's a good few of us going away for an event, we meet up for dinner in the evenings, you know, we, we do a lot of stuff together, play practice rounds, you know, it's um, it's just great because in fairness, every every single one of them or, you know, everyone's good crack, everybody's lighthearted, nobody takes, uh, you know, nobody translates their golf to life after golf, say to, to dinner or to um, wherever else we're going so that's great you know that's that's one uh, very enjoyable aspect of it is just being able to get away from golf and just talk about other things just have a laugh with them so um, yeah very grateful that the Irish lads out here are so sound and kind of I suppose helped me transition from an amateur to a professional so easily um, as a, a proud Irishman it's great to see you know such success on a, on a national stage um, you know, obviously Shane has a career that I think any aspiring golfer would love to, to emulate. He's been, what he's done in the game is just incredible. Same with Podrick. Podrick, I think, is uh, doesn't get enough credit, to be honest, for how, how incredible he was. He was obviously my hero growing up. Um, my first golf memories involved Podrick Harrington, you know, watching the TV. So uh, I think his his, or his mentality and his career is, is something I've certainly looked up to and aspired to a lot. Um, and it was great to, you know, I, I spent my first proper bit of time with him this year, say at the JP McMahon his invitation and stuff, and um, just getting to talk to him and uh, pick his brain a bit has been incredible for me. And certainly, what he's still doing in the game is inspiring. You know, I'm <laughs> he's certainly I, I know he's playing the Champions Tour, but he's good enough to compete on on the PGA and uh, DP World Tour still. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw him up there at another major or two.